Hey guys, what is up? It is your friendly neighbor Dubius here, and I'm gonna have a little bit of a, I guess a, not so much a tutorial, tutorial, but a little bit of a like basic start guide to this awesome program, Live Split, right here. Um, so this program was developed by Cries and Woofer ZFG. Uh, there will be a link to this program in the description, and basically. What this program is, is a splitting program, obviously. Uh, widely used by speedrunners, obviously. Obviously, obviously. Um, and so, this is a, just a basic layout. This is what I've got going. Um, as you can see, I have two set of splits, two sets of splits running. This is all just one uh, window. And I currently have it running against my personal best and my sum best. I have the attempt counter and all that stuff. And then obviously when I split, it'll be gold. Uh, if it's good or whatever. Um, so <laughs> this is a very very complex complex program with a lot of options. So we're gonna open up here and we're gonna we're gonna basically describe each of these. So obviously we have the title. Uh, the title just refers to this band up here. Um, you can include whatever you want in the title, uh, game category and attempt counter are pretty much the most common. And then you can also have the cover art, which you can either uh, use an image yourself or download it from the database that it connects to. I'm not entirely sure what database it connects to, but uh, if the cover art for the game is on that database, then you can download it. Unfortunately for Octodad, it is not, so I'm just using the game face. Um, next you have detail timer. You can use the detail timer or the timer, uh, which will just add a component for the timer. And as you saw when I was running the splits, uh, it runs both the top and the bottom timer. The bottom timer is the segment, and over here you'll find uh, your current or your PB segment as well as your sum of best segment. Uh, so it's it, I personally think that detail timer is the way to go. It's basically what the landfair timer was without the unnecessary numbers, and it just provides the most information. But if you want simplicity, you can go with the regular timer. Uh, then there's text components, which I have personal best and some of best segments. Uh, this is just a, a recently added component in 1.3 that just allows you to put whatever text you want uh, anywhere. And here's the cool thing about this. I can just drag these to anywhere that I want. Uh, there's no limitation for the order of the components. The only limitation, of course, is that each component takes up its own space. So I couldn't put personal best between the wedding and the second split, for example, because those are just splits. Uh, so next we have splits, obviously. And so the split component is probably the most, uh, I guess, most basic, but you can also split against other things other than your PB splits. By default, it'll just be splitting against your PB and you can change it to a couple other things and it just does that it splits whenever you hit the split button it'll split and it'll track how different it is compared to whatever whatever run you're comparing against for example in pb if i were to uh get a better time on wedding like let's say i got one minute on wedding it would say minus 11.4 uh more text and more splits this one's comparing against my some best segments which I think is a very useful thing to see because it, it also helps you see not only how much time you have to improve on the run overall but it also shows how much time uh, you can improve on each individual split. In fact I need to alter that. Uh, anyway, there's also a horizontal style. I'm not going to mess with that right now because I don't want to break anything but you can have it go horizontally instead of vertically which some people prefer. I personally am not a huge fan but if you want to use it, feel free. So we have this little button right here, which just adds a component. You can also download more components straight from the website. Right now they don't have a lot, but they'll be adding more uh, as people finish them. So basically you can develop components. I'm not sure if anybody can develop components yet, but I know some people have been making a few. And uh, yeah, so the things that we haven't looked at are separators, graphs, possible time save, previous segment, run prediction, etc. Okay, there's a bunch. So what a separator does is it just puts a solid band wherever you want to place it. And that's that. So it's very, very, very straightforward. So if I wanted to put, uh, let's say I wanted to put bands around my, uh, my personal best text to make it look a little bit more separated, a little bit more unique, let's say, uh, I could do that. 
So that's pretty much the separator. You, you, I don't know. You can do whatever. Like this is very, very loose in what you want to do. So graph is obviously just a graph, and what it does, I'll show it off. Oh, I hit cancel. Whoopsies. I'll show off what the graph does uh, very quickly. So I'll do this, and then if I, as you can see, the graph, these bands represent timing intervals, uh, which it'll readjust once there's enough of these vertical bands to uh, be wider, which is around 15 seconds, if I'm not mistaken, with the width that I'm using. Okay, about 17. And then they get wider. And this is just tracking the, the thing. And then when you split, if it's a good split, it'll be on the green. And if it's a bad, or, a bad split, it'll be on the red. If you lose time, the graph will go up. It's pretty self-explanatory, uh, but that's what the graph looks like. You can edit, by the way, you can edit all of the colors for everything. So if you don't like the green and red or whatever, you can mess with it. So uh, I'll take that component off for now. So then we have possible time save. And what this component does is it actually compares, um, it compares your current run to, or your personal best run to your sum of best by default. I'm not entirely sure if you can actually modify it. I'll check that uh, later in the video. But what it'll do is it'll basically, when I'm on the wedding split, it, the possible time save should read about 6 seconds because my PB's was 111, however my sum best is 105, so it thinks that I can save about 6 seconds. Uh, so obviously it's about as accurate as you can get, but if you get a gold split then you'll save more than the possible time save, so that might be confusing, but it makes sense. <laughs> so then you also have the previous segment, uh, and all this does is it recaps what the very last segment was. This is helpful if you're doing a very, very basic timer setup. So if you just have timer and you have like one split, then you can have possible time save. Or, or uh, sorry, previous segment. And yeah, it'll just tell you how good the last segment was. Uh, I think it's, no, it's not absolute, it's it's relative. So if you were minus 10, and then the next split is minus 11, it'll tell you how much time you saved in between, so it'll say minus 1. Uh, it's the same as the W split uh, previous segment, basically. If you use W split, you know what that is. Run prediction is a neat, awesome new feature, new component used. Uh, so what this does is it compares your uh, current run to... I'm not sure what it compares to de by default, but you can definitely change what you're comparing to, and there's a way to compare it against your average run. So you would be able to know if you finished your run from this point, you know, the point that you're at, so let's say I just finished home and I'm minus 10, uh, the predicted time will be minus 10 off of my average run which would probably be like 25 minutes or something because this game is unforgiving. But anyway, <laughs> it, it's a really neat feature. I personally don't use it because I don't think... I, I feel like it can get too cluttered, but you you can use it. It's not, it's not a bad thing at all. Um, and obviously splits. Sum of best is just a single component that tells you your sum of best, which obviously you don't need to do if you have extra splits comparing against sum of best. Uh, and then we ha have, obviously, text component. Regular timer is just plain old timer. Unfortunately, there's some weird bugs with certain fonts. Um, so, and certain certain fonts with the gradient selected. So I'm just going to get rid of that because that looks gross. So that's all the components that are in by default. And like I said, you can get more components uh, on the website itself. But let's go into layout settings. This is where the real fun happens. Uh, this is a bit intimidating when you first open it up, because there is a lot of stuff here. But all it is, is you have this overall layout, which you can change all of the colors for everything, and the fonts and whatnot. And then each other section up here is just for each component. So this is for the title component, this is for the detail component, etc. All the way down. So the more components you have, the more things will be up here. Uh, so, the cool things that you can do obviously is font change. Font change is really nice. Uh, I personally like this font a lot. This is Century Gothic. So I, I like the simplistic look. I like the sleek look. Uh, obviously these bottom four components are not normally part of my timer, but I have them there just so we can look at the settings. So 
you can also turn on anti-aliasing, and if you know what that does, you know, go go for it. Whatever you think looks better, uh, if you have it off, it'll look more sharp. However, round objects will look a little bit more uh, strange, I guess, more pixely. And then if you have it on, then there'll just be, you know, it, it'll look more round, but I personally like it off. It's all personal preference in that case. You can have drop shadows on, which you hardly can see. You can see it down on these because they have the gray background, but uh, on black background there's really no purpose. So then for each component, like I said, we have all of this stuff. <laughs> uh, where is... because in the title... oh yeah, display a game icon. Uh, is there a way to... huh. It, there used to be an option somewhere around here to... oh, that's in splits, my bad. Okay, so that's in that's in splits. You can also edit your splits. And that's where you get the uh, the stuff for the title component. Um, so then we have the detail timer. And as you can see, you can affect the height of the detail timer. You can affect the segment timer size. So this one is overall height, and then this one is the, the bottom number height. So, you know, mess with that, whatever you whatever looks best for you. Again, this is all personal preference, so you can do whatever you want. Uh, and then we can get down here to <laughs> the interesting stuff. So every component will have a couple of boxes for everything. Uh, and what it does is it allows you to alter the component itself uh, independently of the overall layout settings. So that's all of this. That's that's pretty much all of this. So uh, as you can see, yeah, here. So in timer, I have color to override layout settings. If I uncheck it, it'll use layout settings. And then if I have it checked, I can change the color to my my taste. Um, and yeah, all these, again, you can change the font independently of the layout. Uh, and that's pretty much, like I said, all of this option below, like at the bottom half of every component is just independent options from the layout. So then, personal best, this is just a text component. You can enter your text here. You can override layout settings for color, font, and then you can also add more text. So buts. And if I hit A, it'll, uh, or enter rather, <laughs> uh, it'll put left and right text. So that's something that you can do as well. Personal best buts. Uh, but if you only have one text, then it'll be in the center as you see on my sum of best one. Uh, sorry, let me move this back on. So then splits. Uh, so for all of the ones that uh, allow it, you can have a gradient. And if you put this one like that, as you can see, it goes from white to black. So the left color to the right color. And then I can also change, if it's going to be just plain, it'll be whatever left color. And if I can also change it to horizontal, so left to right. Uh, you can do that for all of them. Doesn't really matter. Uh, but if you want gradients, it's there for each component independently. And then you can change, obviously, the number of splits that you see in total, as well as upcoming splits. And what the upcoming splits means is, um, damn, I just hit cancel. I'm so used to hitting cancel after breaking things. All right, <laughs> that's fine. We'll just go back to this. So uh, what it means by upcoming, as you can see, if I go this, it'll scroll down. But then if I go again, it'll actually scroll all of my splits if I have a bunch of splits. Uh, so the use of that is when you aren't displaying all of the splits. And that makes it look nicer, obviously. So, I'll go back to this. Uh, I don't think we really need to see the options for all the other stuff. It doesn't really matter. But, because we'll pretty much cover it here. So, then in splits, there are a couple other things. So then there's current comparison, personal best, best segment, best split times, average segments. So what average segments is, is this. So this is basically my average run. And... This is taken from your split data over however many runs you've done. Uh, if you've only done one run, this should equal your PB. If you've done two runs, it'll take the average of every single segment and add it all up. 
It's a really, really cool feature. I like it a lot. You then have uh, best split times. I'm not sure what that is. <laughs> that looks like a personal best. Oh, wait. Best split times. No, I don't get it. <laughs> um, because it has my uh, gold for a wedding. I'm not sure. I'm not sure what that is, so I apologize. And then obviously, best segments is your sum best. Personal best is just your personal best. It's pretty self-explanatory. You can also add these thin separators, which uh, it's not hard to see actually. Uh, thin separators. It'll just be between the splits. Uh, you know, personal taste, of course. You can always show last split. If you uncheck it, it won't show the last split, which I think you should always have this checked, but some people might not want to. Then you have the show separator. So if you, this is turned off, there won't be a uh, separator before the last one. So I think that should be on. <laughs> Again, personal preference. Lock last split to bottom. Um, I think what this does is if you have blank space in your splits, uh, so it fill with blank space if not enough splits. So if your height, uh, if you're showing total splits more than the run itself, you can fill it with blank space. And I think what lock last split to bottom does is it puts the last split at the bottom of the blank space instead of before the blank space. I believe that's what it does. Uh, if I'm wrong, I apologize. I haven't really seen this do anything. So display two rows, I think uh, slightly offsets them something that I've definitely not messed with a lot because I think it looks weird and then obviously you can override the layout settings and I would recommend doing so because this is really cool so uh, I should be able to hit cancel here so if you look here what I do is if you look right here this is pretty much perfect if I've split once you'll see it all uh, whoops let me shrink that down. Okay, so what I have it set to is the color before current split, which means above, is set to this nice gray. So it looks like, you know, for me, it looks like it's already been done. Then color of current split, as you can see, is yellow. So you can see it's it's a slightly more uh, apparent that I'm on that split. And then color after current split is set to white, which is just I think looks nice. So as you can see, this is what it all looks like. And then, then if you go to split times, you can do the same thing for a color before. I have it set to blue. Color current yellow, and then after is white. And I think this looks this looks pretty good. <laughs> um, so that's pretty much what you can do with these options. You can also change the live delta color, which when you start getting closer, once you've passed your uh, sum of best for a segment, you'll see this number here. There, there'll be a number here, just like this one up here, and that'll start counting uh, because it can actually compare. It'll start counting from your your best segment, and then once you get to live, then it'll be zero, and then it'll count up in a red fashion. So it'll it'll start at minus however much your sum of best is and then count up from there. Um, and you can change that color here, but I personally think that it looks better if you just leave it as default, because uh, then, yeah, it just looks nice. And then obviously current split background color is another gradient that thing that you can use. I personally like the gradient a lot. You can do plain. I think it looks gross, but I like having this kind of gradient. I think it looks real nice. Um, and then, yeah, for my sum vest, I have it all set to the same. As of right now, as I'm recording this, you can't duplicate components, uh, but I was told that you will be able to do that uh, eventually. So look forward to that. So if you just want to do what I do, where I copy all the settings, uh, you won't have to go back and forth matching the actual color. I'm not sure why this isn't set to plain. Uh, so as you can see, they're all the same, except that is on there. Not sure why. And then you just compare it against best segments is what I'm doing here. So now there's one thing I need to change. Here we go. So down here, as you can see, uh, my sum of best and my personal best look different. You can change the accuracy on any of these. As you can see, this is the, the delta time uh, counting up. 
So as you can see, my timer up here is set to hundredths of accuracy. This is also set to hundredths, this is set to hundredths, and then my splits are set to tenths. But for some reason, my sum of best is currently set to seconds. So I'm going to change that to tenths so it looks more consistent. And yeah, you can change the accuracy on any of these. Obviously, once you get down to hundredths, it's not the most accurate because human error, but tenths should be good. Uh, and so that's pretty much that pretty much does it for live split. I'll go into the edit splits um, just to show you what that looks like. So here we have edit splits. Uh, as you can see, you can right here. This is the the box art. And is there a way to change that? Yeah. So right click it, and then you can set icon, download box art, open from URL, and remove icon. Um, just by right clicking that. And then here you can set your own icon for all of these by double clicking and then it'll open up a prompt or it'll open up a window for whatever folder you have set and then you can find icons for each of these. And then here you have the game. This is the database that it connects to. As you can see there's a lot of games and then here's categories. I don't know. <laughs> um, Hey, get out of there, easy. This is any percent. Nah. Um, then you can set the start delay. The start delay is useful if you're doing a game where timing starts when you gain control, which there are a lot of games. Uh, you can time out, you know, how, however long the loading is, assuming it's consistent, and start the timer at, say, I don't know, negative 17, just to throw out a number. And then it'll start at negative 17, and count up, and then zero will be after 17 seconds, of course. And then attempts, you can just clear this out if you want to start fresh. Uh, and then you can add comparison. I'm not entirely sure. Should I click this comparison name? I don't know. Uh, mess with that. <laughs> I haven't messed with it at all yet. You know what? Let's let's tr let's just see. Okay, that's interesting. So you can add a comparison. So, uh, like you can see, this is all of the... Yeah, okay. So, you have the segment name, you have the split time, which is my personal best. You have the segment time, which is the actual time in the segment, rather than the absolute time. It's the relative time. And then you have best segment, which is your uh, relative best time. And then, I guess for this, you could fill it in with whatever numbers, like let's say world record or something. And then you can actually compare against it, I think, in the same thing. So let's let's just... Uh, uh, I'm just going to add that for now and see, because there is an option to compare against more stuff. Testing stuff live. So, comparison... There should be a way to add another comparison. I thought I saw the option somewhere. Uh, give me a minute. <laughs> I apologize. Huh. Oh, here we go. So, here we go. This is what you would probably use it for is in the detail timer. So as you can see, my the comparison to by default is set to best segments. And you can even hide it if you don't want to see it. If you just want to see what your segment was on the on the split. But you could compare against test. Uh you know, so world record if you wanted to. Uh instead of comparing against your best segments, which is what it's set to by default. So there you go. That's what that does. <laughs> I'm glad I figured that out. Um let me re remove that though. Remove. There you go. Easy. So that's pretty much that. That's live split in a nutshell. Um, as you can see, this run is going real sour. So let's just split a couple times and catch up. Look at that. We're in the green. All right. <laughs> so thanks for watching. I hope this was informative. I hope this was helpful. Um, yeah, it saved those. Don't worry. That'll be fixed soon, because uh, I won't save the splits. But um, yeah, I hope this was informative. Obviously, this ran pretty long, but this program has a lot of stuff to look into. 
but hopefully if you don't already use this program this will sway you to use it because I think this program is amazing <laughs> but uh, yeah thanks everybody for watching